Hi guys, we're back with this remote control door lock that I did the other night. Um, I've had another query on it so I'll just do a quick resume of what we were talking about. Last August, so nearly a year ago, I was asked to do a radio control door lock which I did using normal radio control gear. So had my radio control transmitter and a receiver and a servo to unlock the door and I said at the time that was a rather expensive way of making a radio control door lock and suggested that you could use a single channel radio control remote lock or remote transmitter and receiver like this one I think these are about, I don't know, 30 quid, something like that. Or 30 pounds, 40 pounds. Whereas this thing is 2 or 3 pounds. It's only a single channel. It's got two buttons, A and B. This is the receiver. And all that the receiver does is operates that relay. And that relay is in effect just an on-off switch so it will turn something on for you and then turn it off. Button A turns it on, button B turns it off. So we went through that, uh, so say yesterday or the day before, using that receiver, that transmitter and a little solenoid that opens the door or unlocks the door. Now one of the other queries I had was based on the original radio controlled version where I used a servo to open and close the door or lock and unlock the door. The question was could we modify the servo so that we could use it without the proper radio receiver. And the way you do that is you take the little circuit board out that's in there that converts your signal to the amount of turn that you want on the servo arm. If you take that little circuit board out then you can just drive the motor continuously. So it will just keep going round until it meets the stop, because there is a stop in there that stops it going the full 360 degrees. Now that would work. You could do that and you could get that to move the same lever that this solenoid's moving. But there's a problem. All that this does, this little receiver, is switches on and off. There's no reverse on it. So what would happen is it would switch on turn the lever arm until it meets the stop and then you're stuck because there's nothing to turn it back the other way. What you could do is take the stop out and then have it continuously rotating. So it'll unlock the door and lock it again. Unlock it, lock it, unlock it, lock it. And what you would have to do is judge when it's locked and then press the, wherever it is, ah, all the way over there, then press the off button. So on will start it driving and it will unlock but then it will lock again because it will just keep going, lock, unlock, lock, unlock, lock, unlock and you then have to judge when it's open to stop it so that you can open the door and then on again to drive it forwards until it's locked and then press stop to leave it stopped or locked. I think the only thing I can do is rig it up and show you what I mean because talking about it probably doesn't explain it very well. So I'll take the circuit board out of here and take the little mechanical stop out of there which is as far as I know just a little plastic peg that we need to cut off. You'll probably notice a bit of hot glue around this servo, that's because I've used it before. But you can ignore that. We'll just take it apart. 
hopefully my camera will stay in focus. May need to cut the label off or separate it because there's a top and a bottom. Don't go in too far, you don't want to cut anything inside. That'll do. Just focus, yeah. Right, the bottom end has got the circuit board in it, which we want to take out. So that's the electric motor just there. So we need to make connect connections to those two terminals. In there, is a part that we won't need at all for my purposes. That's the bit that actually detects how much of a rotation the lever arm has made. And that's not going to be important to us at all. We can just ease the rest of it apart. There we go. In there, that's the stop. That piece there, that's the bit that stops it rotating more than, well, 360 degrees, it actually stops it well before then. So that's the bit we're going to need to trim out the way so that it can keep rotating. So we don't want to move any of these if we can avoid it. So I'll put that down carefully. Right. So we want to get that piece out. So we have to take this off. Push that through. And we need to get that tag off. Focus, aren't we? we? Need to get rid of that, which I'm going to try and cut with a pair of nippers or cutters. I'm not sure if these nippers will be strong enough to do the job. Oh, yeah, seems to have done it. Might want to just trim that up with a knife. Right, I think we focused. So I've taken that little plastic peg out of the way, and I will try and get it back together. Right, so I think that's in place. There you go, we're now doing full 360 degrees. We can unsolder all these wires because we don't need any of them. Take the wires off the motor. I could just cut these wires off. I'll try and be neat and unsolder them. <laughs> Should have used a little bracket or something to hold it still. Right, so that's the circuit board that we're not going to use at all now. I won't throw it away, I'll keep it, I might find some use for it one day. Now we need to attach a couple of wires to the motor. Go. 
rather thicker wires than the original were. I'm not sure if the cover will go back on without me trimming them a bit. Oh yes, looks like it will. Before I actually screw it down, I'll just try it on a battery. So, continuous rotation. You can use this simple modification to make little robots and that sort of thing if you want. Because you can use a small motor, lots of gearing, so you get plenty of torque. Right, I'll put the screws back in again and then we'll rig it up to open and shut the door lock. There we are, all up together. So it's the same circuit as a couple of nights ago. We got the single channel receiver and transmitter. I've got a LiPo battery actually feeding the power into the receiver. And then we got three uh, AA batteries there powering the servo. So if I press the button, I'll just hold the door closed so you can see the action. see the lock or the catch opening and closing, but as I say it's a continuous action, so you would have to judge when it's unlocked and when it's locked. So we're unlocked, we can open the door, we're locked, the door won't open. Unlocked, open the door, locked, door locked. So that's our modified servo that rotates continuously and just runs off ordinary DC. So I hope that answers the other questions. You've also got the bonus of seeing inside one of those servos. I'll put a link in the video description to a video done by, I apologise I've forgotten the chap's name now, but he shows you how to modify the servo for continuous rotation, still using it as a proper radio control servo. So it still has the circuit board in there, he has to modify the electronics a little bit, basically put a resistor in there that allows it then to continuously rotate still need to take that little plastic peg out because that's a physical stop to it rotating but he modifies the circuit board or modifies the little um, unit that recognises the amount of turn so that you can use it as a radio controlled um, robot or whatever to give you continuous rotation anyway job done <laughs>